Hey everyone, thank you for joining us for the latest Canary Coaching Session. Today we're going to focus on using relative date time in Axiom. My name is Kyle Kensinger and I'm happy to lead you through the lesson today. In this webinar, we're going to explain what relative date time is and how to correctly apply it. Feel free to use the Zoom features and ask questions. We do have other Canary team members standing by live in the chat. So a relative date time is a dynamic expression that must start with a relative start term, followed by optional relative duration terms. And they can be added or subtracted from the start term value. Now here's a list of relative start terms. So you can look at anything from now, which would include the current sub-second data all the way down to a second, minute, hour, or even the start of a year. The relative duration terms can help you key in on the exact time frame that you wish to view. It's all pretty basic, but since using relative date time is used throughout the Canary system, it's very important to have a better understanding of the available syntaxes. So this can really help you increase your solutions capabilities. Now I wanna jump over to Axiom and show you an example of how relative date time can be used. So here we have an Axiom dashboard. Uh, on it, I've got four donut gauges and they're all linked to my CPU usage total tag. As you see, it changes quite frequently and you'll see that noted in each individual donut gauge. I want to take these three gauges. We'll apply an aggregate interval of one day. And let's look at the time average two. If you're not aware, we do have a long list of potential aggregates to choose from. So now you see the first donut gauge is still looking uh, at the raw CPU usage total tag that's constantly changing. And these other three have been set accordingly. Maybe I wanna see what the uh, CPU usage total was at midnight. You can set it to the start of the day by just typing day, hitting enter. And here we have what the value was at the start of the day. Maybe for this one, I wanna see what it was at 6 a.m., for example. So we can change the aggregate start time to day and then add six hours. And there we see 12.8. Now for this one, I also wanna see what it was at 6 a.m., but I'm gonna do it slightly differently. by typing in 6 a.m. Now you see the values are the same for the last two donut gauges, but for this third gauge, doing this is gonna cause no value to be seen from midnight until 6 a.m. when it rolls around again. So you can imagine once we hit the start of the day at midnight, there won't be a value to show when it's typed in this way for the aggregate start time. Whereas the last donut gauge at 6 a.m. would hold that value on the screen until 6 a.m. rolls around for the following day. Let's change this from 6 a.m. and just type in day. Let's see what it was at maybe eight o'clock this morning. So day plus eight H for hours. And there we see the value. Now, instead of typing day, I could type in today, and the value is still the same. Or I could even do Wednesday, typing in the day of the week, and again, the value will remain the same. So there are different ways to type in the aggregate start time and get the same value. To further demonstrate 
some additional relative daytime examples, I'd like to introduce Jeff Nepper from the Canary team. Thanks, Kyle. Uh, so to further demonstrate the points that Kyle has started to build upon, um, I thought I'd use a value box. And this value box, I've formatted the box where normally it would say value to read time. So it's showing me the current timestamp, uh, and I've put that format in a month, day, year, hour, minute, second, so that we can see the timestamp that I'm currently referring to on this value box. So I don't need to apply an aggregate interval or an aggregate kind in this instance. I'm simply going to be using relative date time to do a time shift. Uh, for instance, if I type in now, I get the exact same value as um, I would be getting live. It is the now value from when I typed it. If I remove that value, the timestamp will continue to update once a second because I'm pulling this diagnostic tag every second. Uh, I could do hour, and my relative date time will go to the beginning of the most recent hour. If I do hour plus 5m, I will move to 5 minutes past the hour. Now, for my current time zone and my current system time, that is in the future, which is why my timestamp just went gray. If I go to plus 3m, that was in the past, and my timestamp is uh, its normal opacity. So I could do the same thing. Um, and go to minute and get the most recent minute, which for me is now five minutes past the hour. Minute plus 2s for second moves me two seconds forward. So not only can I do day, but I can also do month, which will take me to the first day of the month. So if I wanted to go to the last day of the previous month, month minus 1d for day. If I wanted to go to the beginning of yesterday, so a few things to note. If I want to make sure that um, I am always pulling a value from noon of yesterday, I would simply do something like yesterday plus 12h. So now I'm always referencing yesterday at noon. If I wanted to reference the beginning of the week at the start of my first shift, which might be Monday at 8 a.m., I would hard code Monday plus 8h. And that will always reference Monday at 8 a.m. Now, as Kyle has mentioned, depending on the syntax that I use here will depend on whether I have a value up until that point of time has passed. So if I had said day plus 8h, I would not have a current value today until I have passed 8 a.m. But if I say Monday plus 8h, if it is 7 a.m. on Monday, I will be showing the value from 8 a.m. previous Monday until I have passed that point of time, and then I will be showing the value today on Monday at 8 a.m. So keep that in mind as you're using relative date time. If I use day or today, it's going it's or hour or minute it is referencing the current hour, day, slash minute that I am in. And if I call a point in the future, or if I call a point that I have not yet passed, I will get no value until I pass it. I hope that makes sense. Um, this is a great way to experiment with relative date time using the value box and picking a system tag, in this case, a diagnostic system tag, that I know logs every second because I can continue to try to figure out how to get to specific points of time most efficiently. 
Um, and one thing I failed to mention is that I can also uh, type in actual points in time. So if I wanted to type in and hard code a specific date and time, I could do that. All right, um, that wraps it up for me. Kyle, I'll kick it back to you. Thanks for letting me dive a little deeper. Sure, Jeff. Okay, let's look in the Axiom tutorials, and I will show you where we have provided documentation for you to reference. This pop-up will take you through how to apply relative start terms as well as relative duration terms. Now, as you can imagine, you can get very specific. Uh, if you want to see maybe what the value was uh, of a certain tag at the start of a week, maybe at the start of a month or the end of a month, it's just different ways to apply context to your data. Because as you can see with this first donut gauge, showing us the, the raw value sometimes can be useful, but many times you want to see the data in a different context and using relative date time can help you achieve that. Again, uh, I would encourage you to check out Axiom, go to the tutorials, relative date time, and play around with uh, maybe your CPU usage total tag or uh, diagnostics tags tend to be a great way to uh, learn the tool, or you can always do it with your own data in your own Canary system. If you think of any questions after the Canary coaching session, again, I would encourage you to check out the Canary community and interact with other Canary users. But once again, I want to thank you for taking the time to attend today's Canary coaching session and learning more about relative date time. Wish you all a great rest of the day. Take care.